AM 790 Talk and Business presents The Coalition, a weekly one-hour show that looks at all sides of local, regional, and national news, as well as current events. Join us now for The Coalition. And we are The Coalition, loud and proud, issues-driven, outrage-porn-free. Of course, as always, we can be found on Facebook.com slash the Coalition on the Mighty Mighty Twitter at Coalition underscore radio and our newly popular, newly redesigned, brighter brights, whiter whites, Coalition Radio dot US, where you can find the rantings, the ravings of a lunatic madman, my own co host and friend and buddy and compadre. Dave Fisher. Dave, welcome back for another quality week of high-end programming. It's been a fun week in Dave Fisher's world, that's it, for sure. It, it <laughs> certainly has been. <laughs> um, uh, you made people cry and woony again, Dave. You made yeah, people cry. Yeah, you know, uh, that's what that's my new, uh, my new Year's resolution of not suffering fools gladly and offending those I find offensive. Talk about the background. We, we, we had literally... Thousands and I got to do it. I got to do it Blackstone Valley style. We had thousands and thousands of people, if you will, thousands of it's on the website <laughs> re- re- reacting to this madness. Um, there is a civil servant, self-appointed guru of the right, and the arbiter of all that stands for truth and justice in in Woonsocket, Rhode Island. Emphasis on self-appointed. Self-appointed. Uh, a gentleman by the name of Richard Fagden. Give give us a little background and what happened and where folks can find this on our website. Uh, well, you can go to my blog on the website. It's coalitionradio.us. Just click on the blog link there and you'll see David Fisher. Uh, you can scroll down through many of my rantings and ravings. But uh, this gentleman... Uh, seems to lack a bit of self-control when it comes to posting things on social media. Which is normally something we applaud. Yeah, I mean, you know, (laughs) in the immortal words of Guy Kawasaki, who's one of the foremost social media people out there, if you're not pissing people off on social media, you're doing it wrong. Right. Um, But uh, this gentleman, in addition to, and I use the term gentleman very, very loosely, uh, in addition to posting horrible, horrible Islamophobic and, and you know, anti-Muslim things on his page, calling in, in one post he called for reverse jihad. Um, uh, this week he posted a picture, a, a meme of uh, a, a, a Marine in dress blues. A United States Marine. A uh, United uh, States Marine in right. dress blues holding a gun to President Obama's head. Right. Now, let me just say editorially. Um, you know, Dave is the progressive slash green slash libertarian. I am the libertarian. And, and, you know, I to say that I loathe the politics of Barack Obama is is an understatement. On the other hand, as someone who's a constitutionalist and I consider myself a patriot, um, there will be presidents and there will be leaders of the country that I will disagree with. Uh, and while we debated republishing, if you will, these pictures, um you know, on one hand, people needed to see it to understand the depth, if you will, of the depravity involved here and, and, and the poor thinking process by someone who's an appointed leader in the city of Woonsocket. Uh, at the same time, we had to figure out a way to couch the photo so that it was clear in no shape, way or form do we support, even as someone I consider myself a vitriolic political opponent of the current uh, current regime, the Obamanistas, um, that in no way, shape or form, while we talk about you know, Second Amendment rights, we talk about First Amendment rights, we talk about civil disobedience in this show. Do we advocate violence against really anybody? And and so it was with a little trepidation, uh, Dave being the ballsier of the two of us, uh, you know, <laughs> that we dipped our toes I've in these I've got a hell waters. of a lot less to lose. <laughs> nah, believe me, I am. Uh, but they don't call me the PO taxpayer. It stands for poor or pissed off. Um <laughs> So we dipped our toes into these waters, and the reaction was swift, stunning, and fierce. Um, what, what was the overwhelming reaction from folks? The overwhelming reaction was complete disgust. Uh, it, you know, this has happened before with this guy, and he posts these pictures up and then says, oh, well, you know, I was just trying to get people's reaction. Now, you and I both know that's not how social media works, and if you find something offensive that you want to draw attention to, right. you don't just throw it out there. You put your qualifier on it. You put your, oh my God, I can't believe people say or post or do things like this. You know, I find this completely offensive. You don't just throw it out there for everybody to see without, you know, 
expressing your your disdain for it. Yeah, this this week's uh, secret word, a la Groucho Marx, for the show is tacit, as in tacit endorsement. If you throw something out there on social media without any claims to the contrary, it is fair to assume, on the unwritten rules of social media, that this is either behavior, methodology, a thought... Uh, thought process that you somehow support yeah and and one of uh, one of the commenters on on facebook a, a friend of mine who is certainly no liberal uh said you know even you know this is an outrageous thing to post and if if you act like an ass on social media it's the same as acting like an ass in public and if this guy can't show any kind of reasonable judgment in what he posts on on facebook then how can we expect him to exer- exercise reasonable judgment as a member of our zoning board in the city of Woonsocket? Right, which directly impacts people's lives, often people of color, often people of disadvantaged means, particularly in a city that's as financially challenged as Woonsocket. Now, it was interesting, too. Now, everything we're talking about in terms of people's reaction are public posts that have been put out to Facebook. These are not private communications. These people put that out there with a reasonable expectation that, that they would be discussed. So there was one city... Former city councilor, uh, Mr. Ward, I guess. Who? What was his reaction to? Uh, uh, I, I, and I, I could I actually quote it for you if I could pull it up here. Uh, basically, he said, uh, "You know, Mr. Fagnant's bigotry is his own free speech right until it affects his his public decision making as a public official." Uh, which to me, again, and then he writes in all caps: "This is in no way an endorsement of his post." But again. Which, which, by the way, as someone who has held a leadership position in the town himself, former city council uh, president, that 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 is a cop out. Have an opinion, have some nuts, say what you feel, and right? and it, by not uh, calling these things out, that is a tacit endorsement by letting them slide. This is how these these horrible, corrosive ideas continue to propagate within our civilization. Right, and and, and the notion that somehow. It, I'm not expecting Mr. Fagnan or any municipal leader to get up and say, by the way, the following thoughts, opinions, and votes of mine have been uh, provoked by my own inner racism. No one's going to get out and give a PSA and say, by the way, I'm doing this because I feel like this group of people is bleepity bleepity bleep. I mean, <laughs> you know, that just doesn't happen. So the notion that he's supposed to somehow preface his remarks for for them to be injudicious or injurious, if you will, to be, to preface them with a disclaimer that that's how he feels and that have, that how his effect is his votes is ridiculous. Uh, I mean, you know, if, if you look at the history of the city of, of Woonsocket, which has got its own sordid little past, I mean, think back to the credit union crisis. I mean, who who was wait a minute, who was the head of the credit union crisis at that point? A guy named Dion? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Mark, well, he was uh, uh, one of the, uh, I forget what position he held at the Marquette, uh, Marquette credit, credit union. union. This was the guy who took all his money out conveniently, just by coincidence, as we say, uh, a week or two before the credit union collapse, he didn't get up and say... And oh, not, not like, oh, I got a couple of bills to pay. I mean, closed the accounts. <laughs> right. Took the money. Gonzo. All right. You know, there's another gentleman who purports to be a public leader. Uh, he didn't announce it by saying, oh, by the way, I, I've received insider information that, that the bleak's going to hit the fan. Uh, no, he just did it. And that's how municipal government works. The subtle undercurrents are often prompted by people's personal beliefs, which can include racist, misogynistic, and just disgusting personal behavior. And to, and to expect that people can actually separate that bigotry in their head, somehow compartmentalize it when, they, when they're acting in a public capacity, is absurd. Exactly. So, you know, it just just it's still up there on the post. Dave, where, where can they find it again? CoalitionRadio.us. Uh, go to my blog, David Fisher. You can find all of my rantings and ravings there. Now, briefly, as we approach the break, because we've got a couple of great guests on today, and we're going to continue our theme of what we call Heroes of Civil Disobedience today. Uh, a couple of uh, fine ideas have arisen from the cesspool that is, in fact, otherwise known as Halitosis Hall, our state house. And, of course, another website that we're pushing hard this week is taylorswifttax.com. We'd love to have your reactions to the now infamous a Taylor Swift tax. Um, one of the themes of the show, we're going to focus on this in the next segment, is how libertarians and progressive greens constitutionalists can come together and agree on many things. And I think the general consensus bubbling up if you will, from the well of discontent that is, in fact, Rhode Island, is that Gina Raimondi's uh, 
budget is essentially DOA. And one of the worst ideas to come out in a long time is this whole notion that it's by being portrayed as a quote unquote Robin Hood tax, by the way, which is disgusting to me, is a personal property tax on quote unquote expensive homes. And literally, she cast, talk about class warfare. The people who have all this money can afford to give more. Well, the, the trouble is, it's a slippery slope. Uh, the notion of a statewide property tax, when in fact they refuse to introduce any level of government efficiencies in the state, when they, the state is essentially a personal ATM for particularly for people in the General Assembly who run it, as we found out when Gordon Fox, you know, kept the string alive by having yet another General Assembly leader, you know, make do the perp walk. I, I, it's just repulsive to me. I, I, Dave, what are your thoughts? Well, let's uh, let's go to our our blog here and, and see if we can't read some of our our comments on okay. the Taylor Swift tax. Uh, there's uh, one commenter that says this tax is a gateway tax. In other words, a new precedent is being set which will enable the imposition of a state property tax on top of local property tax. This year, it's proposed only on second homes over one million, but politicians are pigs with any new revenue funding source, and before very long, it will widen and become higher. And down the road, it will probably be on first homes over 100,000 or something similar. Uh, I can't say I disagree with that. <laughs> um, and we have people who are who are coming in, uh, you know, for this tax. I think it's more than reasonable to tax a, a second home that is worth over one million. My friend who lives in Providence bought a home on short sale for one hundred fifty thousand three years ago, and her taxes and homeowner insurance run seven grand a year. So rather than trying to squeeze the blood out of a stone of those who are struggling to get by, why shouldn't those that can afford million dollar mansions pay more? After all, it is their fair share. That would be great in theory, I guess, if in fact that the unintended side effects of, of regressive taxes, whether they be aimed at the very rich or the very poor, are often detrimental to the very cause being promoted. I, you know, look at New Jersey. New Jersey had a millionaire's tax. On a practical level, I, I hate to break this to people, but a lot of people who have a lot of money have a lot of options. And the last thing we need right now is capital, more capital flight out of the state. And that's what that – I mean, Massachusetts and Connecticut both have vibrant real estate markets that have coastal features uh, right near them. So essentially you hand an advantage right to them again. Um, this is also, I believe, firmly another shot at Equidnick Island. I mean, the state of Rhode Island – clearly treats it quickly Island as their own personal ATM machine. Again, I use that analogy a lot, but I think it definitely displays the, the attitudes in, towards individual groups of people. You know, this is geared towards South County, Aquidneck Island, which financially are the two bright spots left in this state in terms of tourism business. Um, it, it's just incredibly poorly thought out, uh, too many holes, uh, and, and I'm just disgusted at this point in time by class warfare. I, I just don't – I think we need to be coming up with common solutions as opposed to pointing one group against a, another. Um, again, taylorswifttax.com is well, a great place to, great place to post. I, I also want to point out this one other commenter, and it just proves how, how kind of one step people think. Uh, <laughs> this one kills me. Why is Taylor Swift being singled out? <laughs> <laughs> this in itself is sick. Taylor has done nothing. Taylor has done and hopefully will do for the communities in RI. However, this is going national. Maybe she will sue the state for this. So here's somebody who fails to understand that this is not a, a an individual tax placed on an, on a, a person. Uh, it, it's just uh, it's outrageous. I mean, it's just again one step thinking. I mean, why, and, I mean, you're right. Why go after Taylor Swift? I mean, if we're going to go after anyone, it, we should go after P Diddy. I mean, if there's ever an egregious example, I think we should have a Kanye West tax. <laughs> I bet you we can get a lot of people behind <laughs> <Yeah>. that. <laughs> finally, finally, you know, you talk about stupid legislation. The the the, the Kool Aid drinking R I G O P. And some of them are my friends until now. Um, but so, the Kool-Aid drinking R-A-G-O-P. It takes a lot of time to cast stones at the Democratic Party for their often silly bills. And I, you have to agree. Bake sales at elections, um, squid, all of that, it's, it's legendary. This time around, the Gidget of Rhode Island politics, uh, Ms. Doreen Costa, has decided because I guess some ice fell on her car. And, and that's how we legislate here in this state. If, it's, if it happens to me, it must be important. Oh, uh, so many times. Can't, can't, well, they want to make it illegal to drive with a dog in your lap because somebody got cut off by somebody, somebody driving a dog, with a dog, dog on their lap. lap. Right. Um, 
So Ms. Costa is advancing legislation to raise raise ticket rates on various forms of, I guess, personal driving behavior, one of which is to drive with too much snow on your window. Um, I would point out, as uh, many have.